heinous Richard to Walt Disney. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm swell. Great. How's your week been? Good. Good. Little cold. Getting chilly. Fall has arrived. But I like it. Full swing, yeah. It's nice. Other than the rain over the weekend. Yeah, that was great. That was not good. Not fun. No. Did you get to see the solar eclipse or whatever? The lunar eclipse? Yeah, everything was was all clouded over. It rained. I couldn't see it. It was nasty. Yeah. What about you? How was your week? Pretty good. Pretty good. Just trucking along. Doing anything fun? Not too exciting. Had a baby appointment today. Oh, grown big, come? grown thick. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Got a couple a more, more weeks, weeks right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. How's the dog? She's there. She's good. <laughs> She's there. She's napping like she normally does. That's about all she does anymore. Really wears her out. A napping? A napping really. Yeah. It tears her ass up, man. What? It does for you, t- all of us, too. She takes a nap and she needs six more. Dude, I feel the same. Yeah, yeah. Naps suck, kind of at this age, don't they? Especially in the middle of the day. You take a nap. You think it's gonna help? And you're like, "Fuck, what did I do?" Yeah, you just wake yeah. up and you don't know what the fuck I is going on. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> should go back to bed. But as a kid, you're like, "Fuck yeah, let's go." Ten minutes nap. I've no. got hour hours no. of energy. No, yeah. they would never take a nap. My I son- feel like when I was a kid, you know. Yeah, obviously, kids don't like taking naps, right? Right. But- when you did take, when you did end up crying it out and taking that nap, you know, you woke up, you were just feeling jacked. Oh yeah, just juiced and ready to go. Felt so much better. Yeah. Ready to bounce off walls. I remember taking naps very rarely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think it's just because I had a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. As you know, a kid does for sure. It doesn't last long. No, no, no. It gets worn out pretty pretty like quick. H three ish. You know, you can still get him to do it. Yeah. Start creeping up after that. It's harder and harder. Yeah. Yeah. They start wanting to not go to bed. Yeah. Just cussing at you, but in kid language. Yeah. Yeah. When they can start talking back, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So much fun. (laughs) Yeah. You get to experience that whole thing again. It hasn't stopped. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Well, this week we got the dark truth. Behind fairy tales. Ooh, so this is like a Smurfs 2.0 kind of. Well, maybe. Kind of, sort of. Because yep. I was like, you know, it's like a fairy tale, and that got pretty damn dark. Dude. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Yeah. Those are just theories, though. There wasn't sure. like proven evidence. Right. Yeah. It was just a theory. Sure. I mean, it was a good theory. I, yeah, I enjoy talking about them. A, a, a friend of ours yep. had told us a little bit about. You know, the Smurfs were... His country's origin of the Smurfs, right. yeah, which was kind of similar to what we had talked about, right? Or L- was. A little bit, but yeah. it involved a witch, I'm pretty sure. Oh, And a okay. key. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember what the rest was about. Right. But it me was either. super similar. I just know he he told me, the Smurfs are fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not That's like such a bad impression yeah. of him, but yeah, it was basically, yeah. it was like, he was so excited. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this, is, this will be fun. I'm excited. Cool. Good. Buckle up, Buttercup, because here we go. Ben buckled, bitch. Some of them that I looked up were not what I expected. Of course. Never are. Uh, the one I completely forgot. Yeah. Didn't even know it was a fairy tale until I read about it. Oh, okay. I'm excited to try and figure out which one that is. You'll know. Okay. You'll know. So at the beginning of fairy tales or written fairy tales, there was a man called Charles Perrault. And Charles spent most of his life at the court of Versailles, serving Louis the Fourteenth under his finance minister Colbert. In 1695, Colbert had Perrault removed from office, and with his newfound spare time, he began collecting and publishing traditional folk tales designed for children, including the volumes "Tales and Stories of the Past with Morals." Cool. Okay. It's kind of good. He decided to. Do something different. Right. Sounds like no one else is doing it. Maybe. You know. Maybe he just got bored. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was a hot thing and he just happened to jump on the bandwagon. It was the cryptocurrency of the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Oral traditions, including the passing down of stories, 
were the main method of passing on these stories for much of the medieval and early modern period. Each time stories were told, small details would change, meaning they were constantly evolving and changing over centuries in different regions. Perrault, penning these stories in ink was probably one of the first times they had been written down and given a fixed form. So to then it was all purely oral, like yeah, it, it could have been you folklore, know folklore, spoken language, right? Different and all you know different groups of mm-hmm. people. So he just traveled worldwide and just collected the stories and, and wrote them these down. Stories, huh? Right. That's cool. That's crazy. Where do you get all this money if you didn't have a fucking job, though? Maybe that was his job. Maybe he, you know, uh, created Somebody. a craft out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but who was paying the money for? Like, how was he getting the money? Investors, maybe, because he's like, hey, question. I what got if this I really s- cool book idea. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And if you want to get in on it, we yeah. can find it. Ground floor, a hundred thousand. Yeah, back then, a hundred thousand probably like five billion today. What? When oh, was true. this? Sixteen ninety five. Dude, that's like fucking <laughs> like twenty billion today. You get t- twenty gold yeah. coins, you shillings, or whatever. Shekels. Shekels. <laughs> yeah. For ten gold shekels, I'll let you invest me. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So after that, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm were German academics in the early 19th century who really popularized the fairy tales. Inspired by a surge of romanticism in Germany, they collected stories from the German folklore, many of which were the same or similar to the tales collected by Peralt over a hundred years before. Nice. That's super popular pop culture, right? A lot of people think that they were the original ones, which is not the case. Hmm. But they're just the ones that popularized it. See, I never knew they were real people. I thought they were characters in a book. Oh. Yeah, I, n- I had no <laughs> clue. They were re- I just thought they were characters in like the show and the books and oh. the movies. And, I yeah. mean, I could see that, you know, that misinterpretation. Mm-hmm. I, I have heard, I when I was little, I heard about the Brothers Grimm, but I was like, okay, and? Yeah, I saw they were fantasy characters. Right. Yeah. Like, not real, like in back in the olden days type thing you know oh i didn't even think that i just thought they were purely hollywood fictional oh. characters man. <laughs> just purely made yeah, up yeah just, just fictional characters in a book only in name huh yeah i just thought they were the the main characters of a book at the time that's that's fair yeah uh, understandable yeah. i think so they're real people who actually did the same thing yep and then collected it and redistributed it right yep they Sheesh. just popularized it okay so made it into what we so their shekels went further their shekels went way further <laughs> i think i think shekels were evolved by a hundred years after that you know oh okay so then there were probably shillings good possibility okay. <laughs> gold shillings. i think shekels actually are still around if i'm not wrong is that like a, i think shekels is a current co- a current commissary. currency currency yeah commissary like a, what is this fucking prison <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out shekels <laughs> in prison eat these yeah the israeli new shekel <laughs> the it, it, it was worth a quarter of a U.S. dollar. Oh, we huh. could, If we took our dollars there, we'd be loaded. Probably. Yeah. I don't want my money in. Wait, shekels, is that where though. the war is right now? Yes. Oh, their shekels aren't going to be worth shit. Huh? No, they're they're going to be at least. 20 yeah, it's cents. trending down over the last <laughs> the last month or so. <laughs> no shit. It took a deep dive a few days ago. Ooh, it sure did. It spiked for probably dropped uh, the whole penny. Ooh, that's a lot. That's bullshit! Fairy tales like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Little Red Riding Hood are are some of the first stories many children are told, full of magical goings-on, wicked stepmothers, love stories, and the triumph of good over evil. They have captivated our imaginations for centuries. Why is it always like the evil stepmom? I mean, I get out of stepmom. She's a little evil, right? No, I'm oh. just kidding. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I thought so. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it seems like a super common theme in a lot of those. Well, people always want to be the hero in some story, right? Right. So they can see themselves in these stories being the hero, as it were. Sure. But does everybody have divorced parents? I know today it's like 50% rate, but was it back then? I don't know. That's a good question. Huh. Probably a lot more beating going on. Yeah. Maybe less marriages, too. Oh, uh, probably. You know. They had to hide from the Catholic Church and all that nonsense. Well, they're... I think back then there was like more nuns and like holy workers, right? On mi- missionaries or whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't know how it worked with all the royal courts and all that shit. I wasn't there. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. 
cool to go back. Would it? To see. Well, I suppose. Yeah. Just to be a fly on the wall, yeah. right? You know, I agree. Just to see how everything worked. Mm-hmm. The original versions of these popular fairy tales are much darker in nature, originating in European folk stories and often designed to be parables with a moral twist. They featured painful punishments, sadistic parents, and children being devoured by wild beasts. Hardly the stuff of bedtime stories. Ah, put me right to sleep. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Major Pain. You ever seen that movie? Yeah. He's <laughs> the little train that could or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a fucking terrifying story. The kid's just like pissing himself. <laughs> Is that, that's where we're going with these, huh? That's where Some we're major going. pain stories, I like it. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. The men who turned these gruesome old tales into popular family-friendly stories were the Brothers Grimm, as we said. And although their fairy tales have also now been reimagined, their legacy lives on to this day. So let's get into it. Let's dive in. The first one we have is of Sleeping Beauty. That's a big, big one off the bat. I like it. In one of the earliest versions of this classic story, the princess does not prick her finger on a spindle, but rather gets a sliver of flax stuck under her fingernail. Mm. She falls mm. down. Wow. Apparently, yeah, that'd be painful. Under the fingernails just... Mm-hmm. That's what... That and eyeballs always just freak me out, man. Yeah. Like a needle to the eyeball. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, get, stop. She falls down, apparently dead, somehow... Her, but her father cannot face the idea of losing her, mm. so he lays her body on a bed in one of his estates. Later, a king out hunting in the woods finds her, and since he can't wake her up, rapes her while she's unconscious. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to absolutely sexually assaulted. That's the one thing I was fucking uh-huh. grossed me out about that story. Even as a child, I was like, all these dudes are just coming up and kissing her, and she's passed out? Yeah. I mean, she's unaware? That's not cool, man. No, that's weird. And my grandma was like, well... Disney. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> I guess. It's a story. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's supposed to be beautiful. I'm like, this is disgusting. They grandma. made it beautiful. No, they didn't. Can't, they tried. They tried, but it was weird. He then heads home to his own country. Doesn't oh, stick around. A yeah. Oh, geez. He dipped. Build the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sometime after that, still unconscious, she gives birth to two children and one of them accidentally sucks the splinter out of her finger so, so she wakes up. The king <laughs> who raped her is already married, but he burns his current wife alive. Jesus Christ, so that dude. he and the Holy <laughs> shit. This so, is fucking kicking <laughs> off, man. So wow. that he and the princess can be together. Don't worry though. The wife then tries to kill and eat the babies first, so it's all morally okay. Holy <laughs> shit, man. Whoa. Just, That's just going f- off. <laughs> Straight to the fucking deep end with mm, this. Yeah. So much worse than a, even Walt could do with it. I, he did pretty well. He just skipped the whole end part. Yeah. He just few, cut it all out. Key details. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, bless her heart. I guess. Yes, dude. I, that's who came up with that story. That's what I want. Who came up with these like twisted versions of these? Is what I really want to know. Who is the originator of these stories? Well, Peralta is the one who found them and wrote them down. Right. The Brothers Grimm just popularized them. Why they did it this way, I have no idea. Maybe he just wrote about some shit he's seen in his travels. And then, like, Hollywooded it, right? Like, it was kind of fucked up. And then he's like, but this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what if this happened, right? What if this And was then really thing. juiced it up. And then wrote some crazy shit like we just heard. Do you think it's a real story? I, so it's got to come from somewhere, you know? Do I think it's a real story that actually happened? Quite possibly. Maybe. It is entirely possible. Right. People are fucking crazy. But the fact that she was unconscious and still had kids, that's fucking weird. And kids just sitting there sucking on her finger? I guess. Yeah, that's... Nah. Nah. Right. Yeah, he juiced it up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Unless she was laying backwards off the bed and then it fell off. Like her hand was laying backwards like, oh. off the yeah, bed. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like she was hanging off the side of the bed or right. something. And it just and happened kid, to fall out. Kids just laying on the floor sucking on her finger. I can't. 
Hell if I know. Doesn't say if she had any help delivering these children. She just did. Yeah, how fucked? And then ate the babies. Tried to. Tried to eat. Oh, Tried did eat wasn't successful. No, she got burned alive, remember? Okay, good. Shit. Salem. Well, she wasn't a witch. She that you was, know of. That I know of, yeah, that's true. Sounds like a crazy witch. <laughs> 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 shit. Well, that's a heater off the bat. No shit. The next one we got coming up is Little Red Riding Hood. Believe it or not... The Brothers Grimm actually made this story a lot nicer than it was when they got their hands on it. In Charles Perrault's version, included in his 1697 collection Stories of Fairy Tales from Past Times, Tales of Mother Goose, that's been going on a long time. Wow. I thought that was, I feel like, a newer age. Yeah. Like, softening of things. No. Fucked up, Mother Goose, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. There is no huntsman. In Peralt's version. Oh. Little Red simply strips naked, gets in bed, and then promptly dies, eaten up by the big bad wolf with no miraculous relief. In another version, she eats her... (laughs) Oh, that's it! Yeah. She just fucking strips off, hops in, dies, and gets eaten. That's it. By a wolf. Eaten out or eaten... No, just eaten. Just eaten head to toe. Gone. Okay, okay, okay. Jeez. In another version, she eats her own grandmother first, cooks her flesh, and her blood is poured into a wine glass by the wolfish fiend. Oh, that one's a little more interesting than the first one. A little bit. The first one's just kind of straight to the point. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm tired. Strips. Getting to bed. (laughs) Dies. The second one paints an interesting picture to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Instead... Peralt gives us a little rhyming verses reminding us that not all wolves are wild beasts. Some seduce with gentleness and sneak into our beds and get us there. The sexual undertones are not lost on us, after all. The French idiom for a girl having lost her virginity was Elle avoir vu le loup. She has seen the wolf. Oh, they made her bleed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> get it i guess multiple versions of that one there's a couple yeah rumple still skin Ooh. is the next one on our list rumpy and this story is pretty straightforward and pretty simple a miller's daughter is trapped and forced to spin straw into gold a little man appears to her and spins it for her but says that he will take her child in payment unless she can guess his name in the grim version however when the maiden finally figures out Rumpelstiltskin's name, he reacts pretty badly. And quote, The devil told you that. The devil told you that. The little man yelled. And in his fury, he stamped his right foot so hard that he drove it into the ground right up into his waist. Then he took hold of his left foot with both hands and tore himself in two. Holy shit. He got real pissed. He didn't do nothing to anybody else, <laughs> no. at least, but... He's like, oh, no, he found out my name. <sniffs> Gone. Yeah, I thought you were going to say he just went out a tear and just, like, tore the town to pieces. No, he's a little man. He, he would have gotten thrown away, thrown around. That's a pretty powerful stomp if you can do that, unless you're just made of gelatin or something. Gelatin and sticks. <laughs> gelatin and sticks. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? got to be a pretty <laughs> powerful motherfucker I mean, to yeah. stomp like that and rip yourself in half. He was just real angry. Okay, I've been real fucking mad, and I couldn't do that. Well, I'd never even stop I could my... probably stomp and break my hip because I'm fragile, but <laughs> I ain't ripping myself in half. <laughs> no. Could you imagine the strength you would have to have That's to do I'm that? That's what I'm saying, man. Dude. He's pretty fucking powerful. Why couldn't you whoop some ass? I don't know. That's a good That's a good assumption. And though. how the fuck do you figure out that name unless the devil told you? That's a good question. Rumpelstiltskin. Who the fuck would think you'd name your kid that? It's like... Elon Musk naming his kid XYZ123 or whatever the fuck it is. It's Kevin, isn't it? But Kevin? it's like Kevin or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's something weird. We call him Kevin. <laughs> we just call him Kevin for short <laughs> instead of talking to him in binary. The next story we have is Cinderella. Ooh, I was waiting on this one. I figured it'd be in here. It's an interesting one. In this story, Peralt has a lot nicer version of the story. The two cruel stepsisters get married off to members of the royal court after Cinderella is properly married to the prince. Not bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
In the Grimm story, not only do the stepsisters cut off parts of their feet in order to fit into the glass slippers, but at the end, they both have their eyes pecked out by doves just for good measure. <laughs> Jesus. Good on them. They were evil, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, fuck them. I thought there's three. I guess they must... Disney. Walt must have added one. No, there's two stepsisters. I thought there was three. Well, yeah, there's Cinderella and, and then, then the two stepsisters. There's only two? I thought there was... Okay. It doesn't say anything about their stepmother, just the sisters were evil. I guess that makes three total. That would make sense is why I'm thinking three. But I thought it was her plus three for some reason. Oh, no, no. I'm probably thinking about the stepmom, too. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Cutting their toes off just to get in the slipper, just to get fucked. Like, yeah, I guess. they want to get married to some dude. Uh-huh. Or get boned by him. Mm-hmm. Huh. Absolutely. Wouldn't you do that for love? Hell no. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> I ain't, cutting, <laughs> I ain't no, cutting shit off. I ain't cutting my feet off. Hell no. That's bullshit. If it don't fit, it fit. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> If they don't fit, bye. Snow White, in the original 1812 Grimm version of this tale, the evil queen is Snow White's actual mother, Mm. not her stepmother. The Disney version also left out the fact that the queen sends the huntsman out to bring back Snow White's liver and lungs, which she then means to eat. The fact that she's actually not in a deep sleep when the prince finds her, she's dead. And he's carting off her body to play with when his servant (laughs) trips, bumps into the coffin, and dislodges the poison apple from Snow White's throat. Most notable, however, is the punishment the Grimm's thought up for her. When the queen shows up at Snow White's wedding, she's forced to step into iron shoes that had been cooking in the fire and then dances until she falls down dead. Good lord. At her wedding. Who's some maniacal motherfuckers? And that's her mother. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where these people have the time to sit around and think about these things. What fucked up thing can we have happen to right. a fairy tale? I guess when you put your mind to something, you can you should do it pretty well, right? So if it's your goal to write fucked up things, you're going to be able to write some pretty fucked up things. I don't know why you would want to. Money. People like all sorts of things. Grotesque, weird. Feet. Yeah. Farts in a jar. Parts in a jar. <laughs> we got to get away from that. <laughs> I know. You remember Hansel and Gretel? Yeah, yeah. Go in the old house and the witch tries to eat them. Yep. Because they try to eat her house of candies and cookies and sweets. So the version of the story we know is already pretty gruesome. Already, yeah. Because they shoved the bitch in the stove. Yeah. After right? she was about to cook them and eat them. Yeah. Yeah. Which rightfully so. It's yeah. like, yeah, get the bad person. For you sure. Know? But the evil stepmother abandons the children to die in the forest, and they happen upon a cannibalistic witch's cottage. She fattens them up to eat. They outwit her and kill her and escape. The grim version is basically the same. But in an early French version called The Lost Children, the witch is actually the devil, and the devil wants to bleed the children on a sawhorse. Of course, they pretend not to know how to get on, So the devil has his wife, who tried to help the poor kids earlier in the story, show them. They promptly slit her throat, steal all of the devil's money, and run away. (laughs) Hell yeah. I like that version way better, man. I do do too. I'm going to kill your wife. You don't get bag and get the fuck out of here. (laughs) Exactly. And she tried to help him, though, but that's kind of fucked. Yeah, they turned on her, but she was... Keeping him there still, like she, yeah. she didn't really help him. They saw an opportunity, became little thieves, and then ran away. Well, they're like, "Hey, mom abandoned us, or stepmom, or whoever, right? Right. We got to survive. If we're gonna survive getting out of here, we got to be able to start a future." Yeah, they were thinking this yeah, through. They're thinking ahead. There's some smart little kids, man. I like it. Yeah, they're they're planning ahead, man. Six steps ahead of the devil, by the sounds of it. I mean, you got to have a plan. Oh no, I can't get on. <laughs> Come show me. (laughs) Oh, I have no clue how to do this. Oh, whoops. Slice. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, whoops. Oh, is that your bag of gold, Mr. Devil? Okay, bye. He wasn't around, so What was he doing? Oh, he left? He's like, I can't handle this. You fucking deal with these kids. These kids are ridiculous. (laughs) These kids are pissing me off. I'm going to go watch TV. Yeah. I'm going to go have a... I'm going to go out for some milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He probably came back and was like, what the fuck? 
He probably never came back. Oh, yeah, because he went and got milk. Went and got milk, yeah. That's right. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm curious to see where this one goes. In the Grimm version, she does. A little too often to a prince and winds up pregnant, innocently remarking to her jailer that her clothes feel too tight. The witch, not to have any... She's compass- a little slut, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. The witch, the one that's keeping her in the tower, yeah. not to have any competition, chops off Rapunzel's hair and magically transports her far away where she lives as a beggar with no money, no home, and after a few months, two hungry mouths to feed. As for the prince, the witch... She had kids. W- yeah, because she was pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. And the, then the witch is like, goodbye. Bye. As for the prince, the witch lures him up and then pushes him from the window. Some thorn bushes break his fall, but also poke out his eyes. For all this extra bloodshed, however, there's still a happy ending. This is an excerpt right from the book. Okay. Blind, he wandered about in the forest, eating nothing but grass and roots, and doing nothing but weeping and wailing over the loss of his beloved wife. Thus, he wandered about miserably for some years, finally happening into the wilderness where Rapunzel lived miserably with the twins that she had given birth to. He heard a voice and thought it was familiar. He advanced towards it, and as he approached, Rapunzel recognized him, and crying, threw her arms around his neck. Two of her tears fell into his eyes, and they became clear once again, and he could see as well as before. He led her into his kingdom, where he was received with joy, and for a long time they lived happily and satisfied. Wow. So it wasn't all bad. No. But what about the fucking kids? Where'd they go? Yeah. Doesn't say anything about them. She got hungry in the woods, I guess. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, they just vanished, huh? Just gone. He said, fuck them kids. Let's go. Yeah. Babe, I found you. Cure me. We got a kingdom, but it's not that big. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that big. It's got room for two. Yeah, two only. We only got one main bedroom in the whole entire castle. We only got one chef. Can only do so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't hire another one. Money's tight. Yeah, we get one waiter. We don't get a spare. And a butler. Got to have some butlers. Yeah. No kid butler. Sorry. No. No. <laughs> Nobody training kids. <laughs> no. <laughs> not uh, not qualified mm-hmm. enough. Can't, can't afford them to hire them yet. You remember Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Oh yeah. What do you remember about it? This porridge too hot. This porridge too cold. And this porridge just right. Yeah. This bed too hard, this bed too soft, this bed's just right. Wham, bitch, we're home! And then, yeah, that's about all I remember. And then they all lived happily ever after, right? Well, well. Eating their honey and chilling. Being happy. Fat and sassy. Yeah. In this tale's earliest known incarnation, there's no Goldilocks. Only the three bears and a fox called Scrapefoot, who enters the bears' palace, sleeps in their beds, and messes around with their salmon of knowledge. Oh hell no, not the salmon <laughs> they of fuck, knowledge, you fuck with the salmon. dude. That's why they got pissed. Okay, I see. Let's go. Fair enough. In the end, she either gets thrown out of a window or eaten, depending on who's telling the tale. Yeet. Interestingly, it has been suggested that the word vixen to mean female fox is how we got Goldilocks. By means of crafty old women in the intervening story in- oh. incarnations. Were they all like wearing blonde wigs? Was that the end thing? Is that what they call them Goldilocks? I don't know. A vixen. I've always liked that word vixen. Vixen. It's fun to say. It is, it's like a seductive word, right? It, it is. It sounds sexy, yeah. It sounds sexy. Yeah. Vixen. Yeah. So, do you know anything about the real Little Mermaid? The Real Little Mermaid? I know you've heard stories about I've it. I've seen the live action movie a little bit. No. Oh, not that, that one. The real one. Oh, the, the Grimm, one that actually The Grimm happened. Brothers one? The yeah. one that actually happened? True story happened? I wish it was a true story. Oh, you like, said it actually happened. Like the actual real one that was The made, OG version. The, OG. the original yeah. version. Yep. No, I ain't got a clue. So we all know. Ariel most... rose a salmon army and fought the, the land people. <laughs> With the salmon of <laughs> <Yeah>. knowledge. <laughs> No, 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 not that. (laughs) So most of us know about the story of Little Mermaid. She sells her voice for a pair of legs, flops around for a bit, then wins her prince's heart. Right? Yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah. Well, in the original tale, she trades 
her tongue for legs. But part of the deal is that every step will be nearly unbearable, like walking on sharp swords. And the day after the prince marries someone else, she'll die and turn into sea foam. Hoping to win the prince's heart, she dances for him, even though it's agony. He claps along, but eventually decides to marry another. The mermaid sisters sell their hair to bring her a dagger and urge her to kill the prince and let his blood drip onto her feet, which then will become fins again. She sneaks up on him, but can't bring herself to do it, so she dies and dissolves into foam. Later, the ending is changed so that the mermaid becomes a quote-unquote daughter of the air. If she does good deeds for 300 years, she can get a soul and go to heaven. 300 years. Man. 300 years. It's a long contract. But if she does good deeds for 300 years, she can get a soul and go to heaven. I got a hard time doing good deeds for 60 minutes sometimes. Fucking 300 years. What are you talking about? That's a long time, man. Well, that is a long time. Holy shit. That's, this is this is biblical ages. That's three like people ago. Biblical lengths. Three people. You quit acting like everyone lives to 100. Most people that do. That shit's so rare. No, they fucking don't. So many people live no, to 100. No, they don't. Yeah. Not really. Look at Japan. So many yeah. people live to 100. Yeah, healthy people in clean environments. But There is blue zones. You're right. There is zones amongst the world. Correct. Right. They're called blue right. zones. Yep. But America really misbalances that scale, dude. Well, yeah, because America, America runs on Duncan, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And Arby's has the meat. Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're enjoying this topic and would like to talk more about it, you can find us at Edible Attitude or at Edible Attitude Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So the next story, I don't really know much about, okay. but I know the movie. Dory? No. Oh. The Princess and the Frog. Oh. Only this story is called The Frog Prince. Princess and the Frog kind of came out when we were older, wasn't it? I think teenagers. Yeah. I like, say we're I teenagers. Like later teens, like 16, 17, Something 15 like maybe. That. I didn't yeah, watch I never really watched it. I watched it a couple times with, with the kids, but yeah. nothing by myself, you know. Right. So traditionally, the very first story in the Grimm Brothers collection, the story is simple enough. The princess kisses the frog out of the goodness of her heart, and he turns into a prince. Or... If you're reading the original version, the frog tricks the resentful princess into making a deal with him, follows her home, keeps pushing himself further and further onto her pillow until she finally picks him up and hurls him against the wall. Hell yeah. Somehow. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Fuck that frog. Yeah. Somehow this action is rewarded by his transmutation into a prince, but it's not even the most violent. In other early versions, she has to cut off his head instead. Until he, before he transforms? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I don't know why. That's, no idea. That just means she's a fucking psycho, yeah. and he better run. Well, he better watch his fucking ass if he knows what's good for better him. behave himself. No yeah. shit. Better get that honey-do list done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> Where she's going to chuck you back against the yeah, wall and turn you shit. back into a frog. I'm gonna cut your head off. Don't know which one. Either or. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> have you heard of the Pied Piper? This is the one, ain't this it? This is the one. I have heard of the Pied Piper. See, and I, it is. A, yeah, I guess it is. Right? I didn't know that. Why totally. Yeah. I, I knew that, but I didn't know that. It's because, not really depicted largely. Right. Yeah. It it's, is, it's like background. Yeah. It's not popular. It's like B-list fairy tale. Right, like you hear about the Pied Piper, but you don't see the Pied Piper. No. He's, he has cameos in a bunch of movies. All over the place. But he's not I'm pretty like... pretty sure Eminem raps about the Pied Piper in some <laughs> song. <dude. laughs> like it's, he's fucking all over the place. Right. Never seen him. But he's not like a main character. No, I've never seen him. He's in Shrek. Is he? Yeah, he's he's playing the... I guess I never caught that. Yeah. In the in the swamp or all the like... Pied? No, actually. Funny? So do Just you know playing the flute and get smoked? No, 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 not pied. P I E D. What? Yeah, I know, I get it, but for a kids movie like that, it would be funny. Oh, That's I see I'm what saying. you mean. That's yeah. what you mean. Yeah. So in the tale of the Pied Piper, a village is swarming with rats. A man arrives dressed in clothes of pied, which is a patchwork of colors, and offers to rid the town of rats. 
To this, the villagers agree to pay a huge sum of money if the piper could do it, which he does. He plays music on his pipe and draws all the rats out of town. When he returns, the villagers refuse to pay the money, so the piper decides to rid the town of the children, too. Oh, shit. In the modern versions, the piper draws the children to a cave out of the town, and when the townsfolk finally agree to pay up, he sends them back. In the darker original, the piper leads the children to a river where they all drown except for a crippled boy who couldn't keep up. (laughs) <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. That is so sick and twisted. That, that last part is from the book. <laughs> he's just crawling by in the woods. Yeah. And he can't drown because he can't keep up. Yeah, he's the only one left. That's fucked up. Piper wasn't fucking around. Oh, no. He's like, no. better pay me my money, bitch. You know what? Fuck that kid. He ain't going to make it anyway. <laughs> <No>, shut <laughs> Jesus. He was at a time crunch. He didn't make it in time, so fuck that kid. brutal. (laughs) Holy fuck. There's some haters in here, man. (laughs) I told you. I told you. Did you have a favorite, you know, fairy tale growing up? No, not really. My brothers always picked on me for that kind of stuff. So I was just like, this is dumb. Oh, you want to be cool? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Mine was Peter Pan. I guess if there was one, there would be that because Rufio, I was like, Rufio! Well, not even that. Peter Pan doesn't want to grow up, and I don't want to grow up. Yeah, I did. You wanted to grow up? I did as a kid, yeah. That's, that's fair. Get the fuck out of there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to grow up because uh, being an adult is fun and all, but it sucks sometimes. Being a kid's way better. 100%. No responsibilities. Man. I don't have to worry about Go shit. Go to school and play. Yeah, oh no. Do some homework. Man, I thought that shit was hard, though. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah. It did. I was wrong. I mean, at the time, it sucked. Yeah, I suppose. But it was it was way better. I wouldn't go back to high school or middle school. I'd go back to, like, seven, eight. You just have... Just play. Just so have so much fun. Just imagination and yeah. fun. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So we all know Peter Pan doesn't want to grow up, but what Disney doesn't mention is that the length to which he's willing to go to fight for it. Mm-hmm. Peter Pan is more villainous than mischievous. This excerpt from the original book is particularly interesting. Quote, The boys on the island vary in numbers, according as they get killed and so on. And when they seem to be growing up, which is against the rules, Peter thins them out. But at this time, there were six of them, counting the twins as two. To put it bluntly, Peter Pan kills the boys to keep them from aging. While the film presents the view that Peter Pan is seeking eternal youth, he is in fact obsessed with death. The original book includes grisly scenes, including Wendy nearly dying after being shot with an arrow, Peter being left to drown, and Captain Hook being eaten by a crocodile. Yeah. But we knew about the crocodile one. Right, for sure. And I've heard this this version of Peter Pan. He kills all the kids and keeps them there or yep. whatever. It's fucking real dark. Yeah, there is... He comes as like a spirit of the mm-hmm, night or some mm-hmm. shit. Kills the kids, takes their soul, takes and like their soul and keeps well, or them. like convinces them like, hey, if you come with me, you won't have to grow up ever type right. thing. And then he takes them to Tricks Neverland. Them. Yeah, yep. I have heard that too. Yeah, fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> is that you, Peter? I lost my marbles. I <laughs> okay, I love that one. That was my favorite one growing up. Oh, me too. Hook. Yeah, Hook. So good. Mm-hmm. Such a good movie. If anybody hasn't watched it, fucking watch it. It's got Robin Williams. My brothers would watch that. Oh, that God, cool. yeah. yeah. Shit was awesome. Yeah. Rufy. Oh! oh! I love that shit, dude. I loved, <laughs> I wanted his hair. Oh, yeah. I fucking love the hair. The The dinner scene in that movie is amazing. I love it. I fucking love it. I liked all the colors. Almost that and the Harry Potter, like Hogwarts feast scenes. Oh, yeah. Those are always cool awesome too but i just wanted to know what all that stuff in the in neverland yeah, tasted like you know, know. it just looked like tastes like whatever you wanted yeah that like. too maybe that's why it's all rainbowy right that's whatever you wanted man and they had regular stuff too i thought right like meat and like stuff i thought they had like some meat and some buns and some shit and then they had like colored well, stuff and then well, they had like well the shit that he scooped out of the mm-hmm. out of the bowl mm-hmm. looked like colored mashed potatoes yeah Probably was. Yeah. Probably just food-colored mashed potatoes. That's true. Cool, though. It was cool. Yeah. In the next 
fairy tale we got is Beauty and the Beast. I have heard a dark version of this too. I just don't really recall it. In the original version, there is no happily singing silverware, nor is there a comically arrogant guest on. That's bullshit! Instead, the real villains are Belle's two wicked sisters, who are ultimately responsible for the Beast's demise. Fortunately, the story does have a happy ending. Belle's love breaks the curse that was placed on the Beast. However, many other versions close the tale with Belle grieving for the Beast. It sounds so happy. Well, some of them, you know. Crying for the Beast, yeah. There's a bunch of different versions, I guess. I couldn't narrow it down to one. That's fair. Because they were like, here's one version, here's another version, same time frame. Right. If you don't like this flavor, try this one. Yeah. <laughs> they had nacho cheese, we got go ranch. They had both sides. Yeah. So you remember watching Shrek, the oh, first yeah. one? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the second one at all? A little bit. That's with the fairy godmother and Prince Charming, right? And Puss in Boots, right? Yeah. So Puss in Boots is regarded as one of fiction's most lovable felines. Puss in Boots is more famous for his quick wit and boot-touting ways than for the folklore in which he acted as the principal character. Rather than merely being a cat with a vain penchant for leather wear, Puss is in fact a sly, crafty, and quick creature who, with his guile, his charm, and his resourcefulness, catapulted his master to fame and fortune and obtained for him a princess bride, a castle, and an innumerable riches so that he could live in luxury for the rest of their lives. Despite having a light-hearted and somewhat optimistic approach to life, there's a certain Machiavellian ruthlessness in the methods of this clever cat, and he seems to encourage the maxim that the ends justify the means, even if the results are rather unsavory. Slitten, huh? Mm-hmm. Just gotta do what you gotta do to get what you want. I could see that from Antonio Banderas. I don't know him <laughs> specifically, but yeah. The character he plays as Puss in Boots? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, well, he was part of the, like that bar out that all the villains were at. You he was know? like a gang, wasn't he? Something like yeah. that. He was he's, the he was, he was the a bad leader. boy, yeah. right? Where Prince Charming comes to him and he's like, "Hey, I need you to do something." Right. He's like, "Give me like a little mercenary." Right. Give me a bunch of fucking money. Right. And then, like in the first five minutes of meeting Shrek, he's like, "Now nah, this dude, all right." He's pretty quick at that sword too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, that makes sense. That is. But yeah, he's like, oh, this big dude's pretty cool." Yeah, he's pretty neat. Donkey's funny. He's a lot bigger than me. He fucks a dragon. That could be useful. What the fuck? <laughs> I, guess, I guess. We can start some good shit here. I've, just, I've heard Shrek can take on a whole castle, you know, whatever that was. Them, them games that he went into on the first one. Oh, yeah. He that, beat the shit out of that everybody. That was such a great, great scene. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. I don't give a damn. I'm a bad yeah. reputation. Wham. <laughs> <laughs> just clotheslining people. <laughs> yeah. I like the lady in the uh, the audience. The chair! Give him the chair! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last one we have on the list is Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I, I've heard there's some dark shit about this too. Uh, a little bit. Kinda. So, as I was looking it up, I found out some shit that I didn't want to. Oh. So, the creator... Of Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, mm-hmm. actually goes by a different name. That was just his pen name. Okay. So him, in him like himself, mm-hmm. didn't have any adult friends and only preferred children. Oh, fuck no. But he didn't do anything bad. Like, he just related with children. Okay. So was he like autistic or something? He or? might have been. Right. I don't know. Okay. okay. That, 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 that's a good question, actually. But Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, as the book is named has been interpreted by many to be a visualization of what it's like to be on recreational drugs. The girl drank all sorts of potions and munched on wild mushrooms to shrink herself, and the caterpillar looked to be smoking through a hookah. It always did seem like there was a trip. Yeah, yeah like trippy there was some psychedelic as fuck. fucking, yeah, the cat. And yeah, it was always weird. Yeah, the Cheshire cat was weird. Yeah. Alice even hallucinated and imagined entirely new surroundings. It was really just a whole acid trip disguised as a children's tale. Drugs aside, the real story this tale was inspired by is nothing short of creepy. The author had reportedly been notorious for befriending little kids and having virtually zero adult friends. He was a photographer and a professor at Oxford who loved spending time with his colleagues' children and sending them sweet letters. 
but probably not in the wholesome way that you're thinking. The author eventually met Henry George Liddell and was introduced to his three young daughters, Lorna, Edith, and Alice. Is he related to Mike Lindell? I don't fucking know. Wasn't that the Flex Seal guy or is that the... He's one of those informational guys, Mike Lindell, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, that's the My Pillow guy, I think. It's Lid. He, this is Liddell, not <laughs> Lindell. <laughs> <laughs> when he had taken the girls out on a boat ride, he told them a story to keep them entertained throughout the entire trip, and Alice loved it so much that she asked him to write everything down. She later became his muse for the classic tale. I want to know what's in them fucking letters. I th- there is. I read one. I don't know off the top of it, of my head, but I'm a try to paraphrase it paraphrase it something about like dear alice you were sweet today or something like that and your hair smelled of strawberries or some shit you know like something weird and creepy no motherfucker be writing my kids some shit like that dude no shit no grown adult be writing my kids some shit like that and be like hey this professor sent you a message hell no (laughs) what the fuck yeah, Professor fucking Jim Bob slid into my kids' DMs. <laughs> no. Hell no. Hell no. You smelled so good today. <laughs> Even if they were in college, I'd be fucking snapping if I knew about it. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't be Fire cool. this motherfucker. No shit. Put them in prison. Put them away. It's perfectly legal, but put them away. No, it was kids, right? Little kids. He's a professor. Yeah, maybe he was. On, it sounds like he had been on the spectrum of some sort, right? Sounds like it. Super intelligent, but. Still low emotional. Like he had people or, that he worked with, but he didn't spend time He hung time out with their with kids, them. yeah. Right. But he taught at a fucking uni- at Oxford. Yeah. Which is a prestigious, very old university. Yes. Probably one of the first universities. It's older if than... If not the, the first. It's older than the Mayan Empire. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like the first university, like yeah. major university. Oh, yeah. It's been around for a hell of a long time. Older than that's huh? no, older than the Mayan Empire. I know. That's a fucking insane fact that I always forget about. That's a wild, wild concept to think about. Yeah. They've been around that long. Seen some shit. Seen a lot of shit. Seen that. Is, isn't that where the Skull and Bone Society is from? Possibly. You know about Originating? them, right? Yeah, I've heard yeah. about them. A lot of presidents in there. Yep. Yeah. George Bush was one of them. Yeah, and his daddy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's been a good number of all them related related humans. Not this podcast, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's all the tales I got. There's yeah. a lot more, but those oh, were the yeah, for sure. Those were the basic the hitters. ones. Yeah. Yep. The well known Relatively well known. Yeah. I don't know which one fucked me up more. Rumpelstiltskin ripping himself in half or That was a good one. a lot of them, man. They're just crazy. That one's probably the funniest to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I like the uh, I like Hansel and Gretel. Like fuck with oh, the devil. Yeah, yeah. It's like fuck you. We're getting out yeah, of here. We're stealing your shit and bouncing. That's a good one too, for sure. <laughs> Gotta get that money somehow. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Or what do they What do they say? Gotta get that bag. Gotta get that bag. Gotta yeah. get that bag. Gotta get that bag, man. Coin purse. <laughs> oh, yeah. And all them shekels. <laughs> the coin purse and the shekels. <laughs> yeah. So what if, let's say hypothetically, Rumpelstiltskin never got found out, right? I'm still curious how the fuck you figure that kind of name out. I don't know. I have a hard time remembering people I know's name. I am I have a hard time remembering people's name like Adam. Sure. Or Todd. Yeah. Like easy names, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. But Rumpelstiltskin? Right. How would you even? How do you even learn that? No. Right. How do you figure that out? Especially when you came from nowhere. You don't know nothing. You couldn't Google shit back then. Right. Does he have like emblem on the bottom of his shoe and he just, you know, Does he kicks have... it up real quick and you <laughs> see it or something? No. Maybe he's got different like letters all over his outfit, you, you know? piece it together. Yeah. And anagram it or whatever. Like a big old word search. Right. <laughs> Crossword puzzle. Hell. Impressive. Yeah, yeah. I'd never be able to fucking do it. No, me either. No. Chad. Chad? <laughs> your name's Chad. No, it's not. It is now. I get your kids. <laughs> no, firstborn. Just the firstborn. Oh, born. just the firstborn. Well, you always make more. Sure. <laughs> sure can. <laughs> That's all I got, man. Cool. 
This was fun. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was it was an interesting research topic. Research let me tell you. Bat. I can only imagine. And there's a bunch of shit that you even bring here. I'm sure. Yeah. And the majority of the stories themselves, I'm sure, have much darker goings on within the book. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, who knows how much I actually delved down to. I'm pretty you know? sure you can buy the Brothers Grimm book itself. Okay. I'm a hundred percent positive yeah. you can. I'm sure. Like Amazon must have it. But or what some about shit. the book before that? The John or whatever is Pierre, whatever, whatever the fuck that guy's name was. Peralt's version. Yeah, Peralt. Charles. Yeah, Charlie Peralt. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. You'd have to look it up. Would be kind of cool. Yeah, reading your your newborn child those versions. Yeah. What's up, man? Welcome. <laughs> this is the Check world. Shit out. It's <laughs> <laughs> happened like three hundred years ago, yeah. bro. All right. All right, buddy. Well, I'm gonna get going. Cool, man. All right. Let's call our quits. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate it. We really, really do, and we love you. As always, I'm Tyler, and I'm Cody. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. 